Hey guys, what's up everyone and welcome back to a new video. Since we have covered installing Kali Linux on VirtualBox in the last video, we are going to also do that for VMware now, since you guys have asked me to also provide a tutorial for VMware and because I am currently updating all of the old articles and videos to be on the latest versions, so that you guys always have the most up-to-date information available. Gladly installing Kali Linux on VMware is as simple as it is for VirtualBox since we are going to utilize a pre-configured and pre-installed image that is provided to us by the Kali Linux team. We are going to use exactly the same method as we did in VirtualBox. And as you guys know, we always provide a written piece of content that goes along with our videos. So I recommend you to pull up that article while you are following along in this video. In case I'm moving too fast for you, you can go through step by step. I will also follow the exact instructions that are written in the article. All right, guys, with that out of the way, let's go. Alright guys, so the first thing we obviously need to do if you haven't done it already is to download VMware Workstation and before the question arises, uh, VMware Workstation Player is free. Now I've gone into all of the differences that the free version versus the pay version has and you can also read it up on their uh, website. So it's a link here, you can, you can check that out. Uh, but the gist of it is that the free version is perfectly fine to use. The only problem on it is that it doesn't support taking snapshots which is still fine if you just want to run Kali and you don't need the snapshot feature. But usually that's something that a lot of us are utilizing, myself included. Uh, however, if you want to try it out anyway, if you see if it performs better than on VirtualBox, maybe since I personally had some issues with VirtualBox and Kali Linux lately, so I went over uh, to VMware, but the opposite is true also sometimes. It always depends on how fast the teams over at VirtualBox or at um, Kali... Um, VMware are updating their um, drivers and stuff like this, their compatibility, compatibility packages uh, and stuff like this. So sometimes VirtualBox runs better, sometimes VMware runs better. It's really a um, little bit of luck there. But at, the, at this moment, I'm personally using VMware, but I'm using the pro version, the paid version that I have bought a couple of years ago. It's the version 16 still, the newest one is 17, I think. Uh, regardless, the installation process itself is exactly the same as on VMware Player, so you can just follow along with this video without any issues. So if you want to go ahead and download VMware Workstation, you can just go and download it and install it. It's free. You probably have to sign up. I'm not sure. Uh, they will probably require you to log in, but whatever, just do it install it, leave everything as default, and in case they prompting you to restart your machine, go ahead and do just that before continuing with the next step, which is downloading Kali Linux. Now you can click on the link in the article or you go to kali.org forward slash get minus Kali, and then you will end up somewhere here, I think. Yep, that's uh, exactly where you will end up. And there are two ways to go about this. We could go and install it from scratch, like go through the installation routine and everything, all that kind of stuff. Um, or you could just download the pre-configured virtual machine image that Kali provides for us. Now, in my experience, that has been the better way. It's much faster, easier, and it's working out of the box. You don't need to install any kind of guest uh, additions or VMware driver packages. It's all pre-installed and pre-configured for us to just download and it works. So we click on this virtual machines. Uh, then we get sent down here and make sure you choose the right one. There's the VirtualBox one, there's the VMware one. You want to download the VMware one. You just click on the download link, it's 2.4 gigabytes. You should choose the 64-bit version if you have a modern operating system. If not, you have to choose the 32-bit version, but you have to figure that out yourself. You could also go ahead and download the weekly build. This is a little bit more up-to-date than uh, the uh, LTS build, I guess, or the rolling release here. Um, this gets updated weekly, as it says, so if you download this, you might save a little bit of uh, downloading updates and upgrades afterwards. You can also see the file size difference. Here it's 2.4 gigs and here it's 2.7 gigabytes. All right, go ahead, download that, make sure you have uh, VMware installed and then let's go ahead and install Kali Linux. Okay, if you have everything in place, we can go ahead and go through the installation process. It's really just an import process, so um, it's going to be really, really easy. So you have downloaded Kali Linux, then you open up your downloads folder. And I'm just going to do that. 
and uh, you can see that this is a 7-zip file. Now, I don't know if you can extract it with the default windows. Um, it doesn't look like it. So you have to probably download 7-zip. It's something like WinRAR, if you're familiar with this. Just Google 7-zip and download it. It's a free tool, um, at least for personal use, as far as I know. And uh, you can then unzip that. And after you have installed 7-zip, you want to right-click this thing. And then you go to Show More Options if you're on Windows 11. And then you want to go to 7-zip. There is a new bar here, a new uh, menu. And you go on 7-zip. There we go. And then you just do Extract to Kali, whatever uh, is your version there. As you can see, it's 22.3 in my case. They almost must be releasing the 22.4, the last release of this year. So as you can see, this takes a couple of um, seconds to finish. While that is running, guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like those videos. That would really help me out. 95% of viewers are not subscribed yet, and it would be great if you did. Okay, so we extracted that. We double-click into there, and there is another folder. And if you click into that, there is a bunch of files in here. Now, we want to take this whole folder. Uh, since you probably don't want to have this machine or this uh, virtual hard disk sitting in your downloads folder. So what I usually do is I just cut that out with Control X and then I'm going to move that to my um, VM, dedicated VM drive. For you probably you have to create a new folder on your local machine uh, that you can call that VM or virtual machines, whatever you want. Um, I'm just going to copy that and uh, where we are tutorial machines and i'm gonna throw that into the vmware folder here and i'm gonna just paste that in and it's gonna copy over and you can see i already have another machine here uh, windows 11 machine so your folder is probably empty and that's perfectly fine uh, not the fastest hard drive um, almost finished we're just gonna wait that out there we go okay we can already continue with the next step that's it. Okay, so we have it in here and then we go on um, file and we want to open uh, to open a virtual machine. You could also do scan for virtual machines or you can just open it. Uh, let's use the scan feature in fact. So I click on scan for virtual machines and I already set this as the default directory. And since we haven't imported it yet in here, it should actually find that and suggest to import it. And there it is. You can also go ahead and just manually navigate to this file. What you need to open is the VMX file. So there is only VMX, one VMX file in there. I'm sorry, the font is so small. I try to zoom in as good as possible. I cannot make this font bigger. Um, and then you want to import it. And then you can just click on finish. And then it's importing it right there from this folder and it should be rather instantaneously. And there we go. We have it imported. So we click on it. And the next thing we are going to do is we're going to adjust or basically go over the basic settings. Okay, so there's not really that much I want to change. To go into the settings, just um, click right click here. Or I think we can go into settings here. Yep, there it is. Edit virtual machine settings. And uh, then it's up to you what uh, kind of resources you want to allocate. So always stick to the minimum recommended uh, requirements that Kali Linux has. They are written inside of the article if you want to check that out. Um, but let's say you have eight gigabytes of RAM available, which is on the lower end nowadays on your Windows machine, then you have to leave at least six gigabytes for Windows to still somewhat operate in the background. So I would recommend you dedicate two gigabytes of RAM to Kali Linux, which is also very low and will not be running very smoothly. If you do have more space, if you say, let's say you have um, 16 gigs of RAM, then I would definitely go ahead and dedicate uh, about eight gigabytes of RAM to Kali. I have much more, so I'm gonna dedicate uh, 16 gigabytes. I have 64 gigabytes in my machine and I have plenty of resources, so I'm gonna ramp it up just ramp it up as much as you can, as much as you want. Just always make sure to leave at least, I would recommend six or eight gigabytes for Windows to run in the background still somewhat smoothly. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna check the processors and I'm gonna just leave that per default. I'm actually not very often changing that unless I need some CPU heavy uh, or I run some CPU heavy resources on my Kali VM. Um, so I'm gonna leave that adjusted also accordingly to whatever process or uh, power you have available here. So I'm gonna leave that as it is. As for the hard disk, as of now we have 11.4 uh, gigabytes occupied and we have still 80 gigabytes free. Those 80 gigabytes are dynamically allocated. So they are not actually used up on your hard disk. They will expand as you fill up that virtual hard disk. 
The next thing and uh, last thing actually I want to cover here is the network adapter and this always uh, raises some questions. So there are a bunch of different modes. Uh, as the default, I'm just going to leave it on a NAT, which basically shares our host's IP address on the physical network result, which also means that our Kali VM will have internet access. Now, if you don't want it to have internet access, then you can choose a host only, a so-called private network shared with the host. So this is a private network that will be generated and that will only be available or there will only be a connection available between your host computer and Kali Linux. The Kali Linux VM will not have internet access. The same goes for the custom specific virtual network here. You can create uh, those networks or you can create some LAN segments. And if you click on advanced, uh, you can do a bunch of settings. Uh, I think you can also map that to the uh, local network to have internet access. I'm not 100% sure about that though. Uh, play around with that if you need to, but you can create some internal networks and stuff like this. And the last one, which I should have covered first, I'm sorry for that, is the bridged option. And the bridge option basically uh, makes so that Kali Linux acts like it's physically connected to your local network, which means it will receive a IP address from your DHCP server, from your router or from your firewall. And um, yeah, uh, that's all it is. So I want that my Kali Linux installation has an internet available because I want to install a bunch of tools. So I'm leaving it on NAT. That's the default and that's what I usually always do. Now if you look here in the description on the site, you can actually barely see that, but uh, I hope you can. Um, there is the default username and password, which is Kali Kali and the US keyboard layout per default. So just a couple of informations here, uh, but it's also of course written in the article. All right, since we are now ready to start, I want to mention today's uh, video sponsor, which is NordVPN. Now, if you don't know about NordVPN, I'm not going to tell you. It's just a joke. This video is not sponsored by anyone. Anyway, let's go and start up Kali Linux. Click on the start button here and it will go up. But maybe in the future, a video will be sponsored by NordVPN. Are you interested in having a solid and secure VPN connection to protect your personal data? Let me know in the comments below and I shall provide. There is actually there is actually a link probably somewhere in the description below. So this should be booting up in a bunch of seconds. Uh, eventually, I just click on enter. The counter really didn't go down. Maybe I pressed the button there. But this is the first time Kali Linux is booting up. So um, be a little bit patient. The first boot up usually isn't that fast. So I'm going to leave that here for a sec and we'll be back when it's booted up or maybe it's gonna boot up. Let's see. I'm not gonna waste any of you guys time. I could have just continued to record and save myself some time, but I didn't to save you guys a couple of seconds. Let's log in. Kali and Kali is username and password. Log in. And it's always funny because people ask me if I can provide guides on how to install Kali Linux. This is how you install Kali Linux in 2022, three, almost 23. That's all there is to it. That's really all there is to it. That's as simple as it is. You just install Kali Linux on VMware and it took about five minutes to do that. Um, great, isn't it? So now uh, the guest extensions or whatever it's called on uh, VMware, the drivers, driver package thing, uh, I guess it's somewhere here. Uh, I guess we can install it. VMware tools. I think it's called VMware tools. Yeah. Anyway, it's already installed because we choose the pre-configured image here. So if I extend or maximize the screen, it's automatically in full screen mode and everything is scaling up as we want it to. Now, uh, we can go ahead and we can also use full screen mode. I'm not going to explain VMware to you now. Uh, you can figure that out by yourself, but there are a bunch of helpful buttons up here where you can zoom in and do full screen and all this kind of stuff so that Kali actually acts like a full screen machine. And you can see it's really fast. It's working. We can open up the terminal. And of course, um, this is not a video on instructing you what to do. Uh, with Kali Linux, I just show you two things to not leave you hanging. Uh, the first thing is if you are not located in the US, like probably a lot of you who are watching the video are not, you want to change your keyboard layout. Uh, for that, you click on the start button up here. Uh, just let me quickly make that smaller so I can zoom in better for you guys. Uh, click on the start button up here and type in keyboard, then hit enter. Now I'm located in Germany, so I have a different key map than in the US. My Z button is actually your Y button, so I need to change that. Uh, that it doesn't get annoying. So we are in the keyboard thing, then we go on layout, we go uh, to remove the system default thing. And then we click on add, and you can add whatever language you are uh, familiar with or wherever you're located. 
I go to German and I never know which one I'm choosing here. I'm choosing the first one. And then you want to remove the one that you don't want anymore. You can move it down. Uh, I'm just going to remove it here and then I'm going to click on close. And um, yeah, that's, that's it. And then my keyboard should work. I should be able to zoom in for you guys. And of course, uh, some things to do when you freshly install Kali Linux is do you do a sudo apt update and and a double and here and sudo apt upgrade to update your app repository and upgrade your system i'm not going to run that now because it would take a lot of time and the next thing after that you want to do is you want to change your default password uh, so the password for your kali user because it's not good practice to leave that so you do um, pass wd and your current password is kali then you change it to your new password and your default password has been changed and updated. And if you go ahead and log out, uh, log out. And we want to log in again. We cannot log in with Kali, with the Kali password anymore. It should give us an error. Yep, there we go. I type in the new password I just set. And boom, there it is. Um, this is the last thing I'm going to show you in Kali. To shut down Kali, you click on this button here and click on shutdown. You can also shut it down by right-clicking DVM and clicking on, or you can click here on this button and you can click on shutdown guest, then the shutdown will be executed. It's giving a little beep and it's shut down. So the last thing, of course, if you are on Workstation Pro only, because Work Workstation Player doesn't support that feature, but what I usually like to do is I like to take a fresh snapshot of a freshly installed machine. That's what I would usually do after updating and upgrading the system uh, to save me some time. So I would do fresh install plus updates plus PVD changed. And then I would do the date, which is this right now. And I click on take snapshot. And um, that's it. That's it. That's how to install Kali Linux on VMware. Now, to not leave you guys hanging, I want to give you some next uh, steps that you can go from here. You can check out my channel. I just released the top things to do after Kali Linux video for 2023, the most up-to-date version of that, where I go through all of the things that I like to do after installing Kali Linux, where we install my favorite tools, my favorite drop-down terminal. We set up some stuff. I show you how to create a new user. There is also, of course, the written article to that as well so you can check it out on seosec.com and um, give that a try there are lots of kali linux tutorials here on this channel as well as on seosec.com that i recommend you guys to check out i also have a tutorial up on how to install openvas on kali linux that is completely up to date and um, some other fun stuff that you can check out on this channel make sure to subscribe if you like this video it shows me uh, that you want me to produce more videos in the future and it would be great to have you on board as a subscriber all right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Until then.